Oh, well, good evening once again. All right, well, y'all watch any of my previous videos, you know that this is the engine for my son's Model T go kart. Um, now, since y'all last seen it, I'm sitting on my workbench, I painted the block. Um, I really did nothing to this engine. It uh, it was on the car. It was pretty nasty. Um, it uh, it looked pretty rough, but um, all I did I got cleaned the points and uh, shot a little starting fluid in it, and it actually popped and it popped and tried to run. Um, the guy I got it from said it hadn't been running ten to fifteen years that he knew of. So I mean you can guess that was probably twenty. Um, but anyways, um, check the gas tank. Gas tank was actually clean, but I brought it to work, sandblasted it, and apparently there were some thin spots in the metal. I blew clean through it in several spots. So, with the help of eBay, I bought another fuel tank. I bought another blower. Uh, that's the original blower housing and fuel tank. Pardon me once again. That is the fuel tank I got off of eBay. And then that is the blower housing that originally came off the engine. Both have been blasted and have been painted. Now, I took the original carburetor apart and basically it, it looked good from the outside. I thought it was going to be fine. Well, it completely was stuffed with aluminum corrosion, just that white, powdery, nasty. I mean, it was bad. It, it, there was no hope. So, from a vendor on eBay, I got an NOS Briggs carburetor from 1967. I know it because it had the uh, the date code stamped in the box. It was actually a government surplus part. Apparently, uh, the government used these engines on something in the 60s. And uh, this was an NOS carburetor, which a few things were different. The choke linkage was different, which that's the one off my old carburetor. And you see that the uh, the friction screw is not in there anymore. Well, I broke it off in there trying to replace it. But I put a, uh, I replaced, put a spring in the shaft and it works really well. So I figured nobody's gonna know. Um, it had a flex shaft going to the high speed needle for some reason. So that's the original needle and uh, gland nut off of the uh, old carburetor. It's the original fuel fitting, fitting off of the old carburetor. And this is also the original carburetor shaft because this end was different. So that's all the original parts. I've just replaced them off the old carburetor and put on this NOS carburetor. So it should run beautifully. So anyways, it's a, the Briggs is actually a 1977 model. Um, I think it's an eight cubic inch. Let me look at my tag here. Yeah, y'all can see those. Yeah, 8302. So it means eight cubic inch. 302 series which 302 just means the model it is it's it's an eight cubic inch block 302 means it comes came with the float carburetor vertical uh, horizontal shaft all that good stuff and for those of you who don't know the serial number which is the last set of numbers there beginning with seven seven the first two digits of a bridge serial number from the late 50s on to pretty recently the first two digits are the year that the engine was built. So this engine is a 1977 engine. An eight cubic inch is a three horsepower engine. This is a 1977 model Brig, model eight Briggs, eight cubic inch with our 8,000 series Briggs, eight cubic inch with a float carburetor, three horsepower. So, and that, this is the only engine that'll fit on that Model T, so that's why I went through the, went through the uh, engine and decided to put it back in service. Not to mention, I think it would look kind of silly with a Harbor Freight $99 engine on the back of it. So, I'm still missing a couple little pieces, governor spring and whatnot, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble it tonight and then I'll get that kind of stuff later. 
and uh, and the decal kit. I'm going to get the full decal kit for this engine and redo it. As, uh, put the factory de decals back on it. The engine was originally painted this black color. Um, most of the engines from this period were like a goldish. This one came from the factory black, I assume, because of the application. All right, so I'm going to set y'all up, and uh, I'm going to get the town assembling this thing. Let's see here. There we go. Let's see. That works. Something like that. Get my beer out of the way. Alright. So. Oh, what's the first thing I want to put on here? Um, I, I guess let's go with the carburetor. We'll do the fuel tank and all last. Uh, do the carburetor linkage first. Now, I've got this little S. This little dude right here. That's the only carburetor linkage because in this engine you have a air vane governor. So you see this lever here it connects to the carburetor, and then you put a uh, you put your car uh, your tension spring in behind that. But your rod that holds your spring and connection to your throttle cable actually passes through your carburetor. That little hole, that little square hole right there. So. Let's see how I'm going to have to assemble this, because it's been so long since I took it apart. I think, I think it goes like that. In fact, I'm fairly certain it goes, that's the magnet. Let me see. Let's just see for It's definitely gonna go like that. Okay, so I know which way it goes now. We can slide it into the carburetor. This is gonna go leave. Let's try this way. You gotta forgive me. I'm giving things. I'm trying things here because I tore this engine down months ago. So I'm trying to remember exactly where everything went. Um, you yeah, know, fun, funny thing. You know that happened. Uh, funny thing, in the 70s, and shit, I think in the 80s too. Let me turn this fan off. I'm freezing. Uh, in the 70s and the 80s, I believe in the early 80s, Briggs made these engines with either the float carburetor or the uh, what they call the pulse. I think it's pulse jet or pulse jet. One of the two. Anyways, but. The Pulsa Jet actually was the usual carburetor. Um, it's the one that most of you guys have seen, just mounted. Yeah, that's not going to work. Hang on a tick. Um, the Pulsa Jet's the one that you guys have, you know, most everybody has seen. It mounts to a. Um, the top of the gas tank and it has the little diaphragm in it. Now, why they offered both, I have no idea. Um, I, I really don't know. I wish I did. Um, 
because I mean, they were both rated at the same horsepower. They were both. I mean, they were both good systems. Neither, you know, one of them didn't. Now, I'd say they were both good systems. I mean, you had your advantages and disadvantages with them both. Um, you know, I mean, like in this instance, they went with the float carburetor simply because you couldn't fit a, you could not fit that style of carburetor, or the the the, the pulse jet style of carburetor and fuel tank on this go kart. I need like 19 hands to do this. Put this governor linkage in and everything else. Um, so I mean, it's it's kind of obvious in this application why it was used. Um, but why Briggs would tool up for the post jet carburetor? Because I mean, it, obviously this this float carburetor was was uh, came along long before that post jet did. Um, son of a bitch. Um, well, let me get these started. So. I'm, I, I mean, let me get collect my bearings. I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I have no idea why they would offer both carburetors when both carburetors are actually really good designs. Um, unless you're talking space requirements. Um, so, I mean, if anybody watching this video has any idea why that was done, um, Drop me a line. I'd like to know. I really would. Um, you know, I've messed with these little Briggs engines since I was a kid. And, uh, you know, I've worked on all different styles. I actually, um, the most interesting one I ever owned um, was years ago. It's nine, around 2000, maybe 01. I had a 1942 Briggs Model Z, which, for those of y'all not really familiar with Briggs, a Model Z was a massive engine. Um, all cast iron, I don't even think it was 5 horsepower. Or I think it was rated right at 5 horsepower. It wasn't much for such a large engine. Um, crank start. I don't mean crank rope, I mean like a legitimate crank. Um, all cast iron, even the blower housing was freaking cast iron. This thing, it was a tank. Um, and uh, I completely restored it. Went through, I mean, let's see. I mean, it wasn't a nut and bolt restoration, but uh, it wasn't much I didn't touch. Um, and it was, it, it was a really neat engine. I really liked that engine. Um, really sucks. I, really, I wish I'd have kept that engine, but somebody that collected antique garden tractors needed it for a restoration. And being the soft hearted guy I am, and the fact that I like money. He offered to pay me a decent amount for it, and I took it. So, that's how that cookie crumbled. Anyways, carburetor is mounted. Um, I have no governor spring because the old one was broken in half, so I've got to get one of those from work. Or actually, it's broken in three pieces now that I'm looking at it. Alright, so, that's done. Let's take this old spark plug out. This thing, I, I used this, I knocked the top off of it and stuck it in here just to... Uh, mass for painting old spark plug garbage new spark plug brand new Briggs and Stratton spark plug installed um, some of y'all gonna bitch me for this but I'll do it anyways yes I'm using a crescent wrench I don't feel like going up to my garage and grabbing the right socket. Okay, that's all. Alright, 
And uh, one thing I failed to mention, this engine I went through the points, new points, new condenser, new spark plug. Um, that I, honestly, it didn't have spark, and I cleaned the points and it had spark. I just threw a new, I, I just threw a condenser and some uh, condenser and a set of points at it just because I want it to be reliable. I was going to convert it to electronic, but I mean, I didn't really feel it was worth it. The point systems on these little engines are pretty trouble free once you use all new hardware and set them up right. And for those of you who don't know, the points are behind the flywheel. Briggs came out with electronic ignition in 80, 82 or 85. I can't remember which. Um, they went to the magnetron. And you can tell when you get a Briggs engine, an older Briggs engine, and it says magnetron right here, that means it has electronic ignition. There's no points to mess with there. But this engine being a 77 was not a magnetron engine. So it's got the old points and condenser, which like I said are fairly trouble free on these, so nothing to really worry about. Alright, um, I guess we could put the blower housing on. Pull this bolt. Let me show you all what I'm doing. This little piece of sheet metal, I know you could probably see there's a couple of little rust holes in it, but it's in good enough shape. Um, I've sandblasted it and painted it. It's just a flywheel guard. It's, not, it's nothing. So I didn't really think about replacing it. So I'm just putting it back on. Seven sixteenths. See, that's a five sixteenths. That's a three eighths. One second. I ain't find the seven sixteenths in here. And uh, here we go once again, watching me dig through shit because I can't edit videos. Yeah, bitch. Alright, let's see. 11 millimeter works for 7 sixteenths in a pinch. This is my little rattle gun I was telling you all about. Rattle brush. Okay, that's on. Alright. Lower housing. Bolts out. Thought about changing all this hardware to stainless, but I don't know. I just I didn't feel it would look right in stainless. I just I had that. I don't know. Is the blower housing? Is the paint job on the blower housing perfect? No, it is not. Do I care? Yeah, I do, but. I mean, what you, this is all freaking spray paint, so I think it looks halfway decent for a go-kart. I really think a daytime video, I think, let y'all see it. It's pretty wild. I might hit her with a little, I think I'll, I think, yeah, I got some carb cleaner in here. I might hit her with a little whip of carb cleaner and see if she'll pop. Maybe at least I'll get to see a little something. Maybe I'll do these with a wrench. Um, I don't have fuel line just yet to, uh, to be able to actually the fuel system up, the carburetor and whatnot, but I'll be getting that very shortly. Oh, and of course the governor's spring. And hopefully I can get that at work tomorrow. Now we got a big assortment of springs and 
just try to find something fairly close to make it work. All right, fuel tank. Let's toss the fuel tank on it. This is actually not the same. The, the, this is actually not the same fuel tank that came off of here. Um, well, I told y'all already that it came up from eBay because I blew holes in the original one, but it's not the same size either. Um, I thought this fuel tank was the same size as the one I pulled off. It was not. It, uh, this tank is actually smaller. It came off from older brakes. So, yeah. So anyways, it came in, it was a little smaller than the original, but it did bolt up and it looks, it looks the part. Uh, it's an original Briggs tank, it's just an older model, so it's just got a little less capacity in it. Or it might, it, it, it might be the same year model, it might just be off a two horse. I don't, truly I don't know. But, it's going on here because... Briggs parts from this area are not easy to find like they were when I was a kid. This crap, uh... This crap's getting kind of scarce because he's in. I mean, this engine's almost 40 years old. Two years, it'll be 40 years old. So, I mean, you know, these engines were junk when I was little. Not when I was little, when I was younger. These engines were junk, so I, it's funny to me now that these things are, you know, parts are getting harder to find for them. Alright. Well, I've got this for the fuel system. I've got this fuel valve, which is pretty close to an OE Briggs, which would be for this engine. The only problem is the fuel tank has a quarter inch MPT threads. This is eighth inch. So I, I, I gotta get it a little adapter tomorrow. And um, I've got the I've got the air cleaner adapter. Spin it around where you can see it. It goes in the carburetor like that. I've gotta clean it, it's nasty. And I also have the air cleaner, which I think this air cleaner is absolutely ridiculous looking on this kind of brakes. Um, the little oil bath looks a whole lot better on these, but that's the one that came on. That's the one that's going back on. Um, I just got to get it, uh, get this thing cleaned up and get all that reinstalled. But for the most part, you can see the engine's back together. Um, oh, there goes my beer. We're being stupid. Let's see if we can get her a pop. Let's see. Well, <laughs> she does pop. Um, that's all I'm going to do. I, it's. It's pointless to try to run it any more than that. I mean, I have absolutely no fuel system on it. I have no muffler hooked to it. And it's really late. So I'm glad to see it still pops. And she still tries to run. I'm going to give it a nice little clean and order the gas and order the uh, decal kits. Get the last couple of few parts I need. I'm actually about to drain the oil out of it. And uh, I'm going to drain the oil, put some fresh in. And... Um, well, once it's done and I can test run, I can sit on the ground and run it for a couple hours, make sure she runs good and everything else is, is, is fine with her. Her, listen to me, I'm fucking with the engine like a fucking woman. Anyways, once I find out everything's good with this engine and it runs good and like I said, all, I can test run it and everything else, um, I'm gonna throw it in a plastic bag, throw it upstairs in my shop, and then I will start on the car. Um, I still have to get that rim, which my wife was supposed to order a month ago, but she's working on it. <laughs> um, and uh, once the rim comes in, I can get some new tires put on, get the whole thing painted. I'm actually going to repaint it like an original Model T. I'm going to, uh, since we're done working on the engine, um, for now at least. Alright, there we go. Something like that. I gotta get a tripod. So, 
since once the engine's done and start working the Model T, I'm going to be painting it uh, all black. It's black and red right now. Painting all black. I'm painting the, the rims a nice like dark wood color. Um, that way, it looks like an original '20s era Model T. Um, it's got like a brass colored grill right now and everything. It, it, you know, if, if you're gonna paint something brass, it I don't know, it, it doesn't doesn't look right to me. Um, I, I want to make it look like a '20s era Model T, where it didn't have the brass radiator and the brass headlights. All that stuff was painted black. Um, I'm gonna go straight black on the car, dark brown on the wheels. And um, it's got like little grease cans for headlights, or like, and if you've used Never Dull, same damn can. Um, they paint, they paint them gold, and it, it came from a factory like that. They painted the whole thing gold. Didn't put a sticker or nothing on the front of it. Just two round cans in the front for headlights. I'm actually gonna try to get some, uh, some like tractor work lights, and make them look like the original Model T headlights. And then I'm gonna put a little tail light in the back. And then the engine sits, basically the seat is, well, shit, y'all can't see I'm moving. The seat is here. Okay, so the exhaust faces the seat. Well, originally it had this, which I think I've thrown it away, the original muffler on it was a little hot dog style round muffler, but, you know, yay long. It came out and it had a little turn down on it. Well, instead of running that, I'm going to have a pipe nipple coming out of here. And uh, we have a half inch conduit bender at work. Um, I'm going to take some half inch metal conduit, bend a 90, come down, bend a 90 underneath, and then go out underneath the back bumper and then put one of those little hot dog mufflers at the end with a um, chrome tip covering it. And we'll turn it out. I think it'll be really nice looking. But yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the game plan for the Model T. Um, I know I'll probably get a question how long it's going to take me. I have no idea. <laughs> My son's two. He's not going to be driving this thing for another two years. Um, do I want to get around so I can go ride around? Yes, I do. <laughs> um, I like to you know, ride around the neighborhood, drink some beer, go see my neighbors and this, that, and the other on it. And hopefully I can get it done fairly soon and do all that. But if I get it done, I get it done. If I don't, well, shit happens. Um, show you a few other things that are going on right now. Uh, whoop. There we go. This pressure washer, uh, it's been sitting around my house for a long time, um, about a year and a half. A co-worker, I helped him uh, clean out his shed. And it was, well, I know he, he said his neighbor had a divorce. Or he, he, he was going through a divorce and his neighbor Right before him and his wife divorced, and it was a bad divorce. Uh, right before that happened, um, his neighbor brought him this pressure washer to clean it up and rebuild the carburetor. Well, uh, that some time had passed, about six, eight months to a year had passed, and I went and helped him clean out his shed, his old house. He, he had moved out, his ex-wife was still living in there. And he said, look, he said, the neighbor that owned this thing that brought it to me, hasn't been home um i don't see the guy he said basically i can't get in touch with him so take this thing home and just know that if i ever ask you about it i'll need it back but he said i know the carburetor needs to be rebuilt the car the carburetor had been sitting in a tupperware box disassembled for the last i don't know two years or so so last night i got my well yesterday or day before yesterday i got a little i got my little carburetor kit in for it clean the carburetor put it back on and it runs beautifully after running for about 10 minutes and basically clearing its throat um, it runs great it, it really runs good I've got an electric one so um, this one's got a little extra power but I mean it really isn't that big of a difference so I don't know if I'm gonna keep this or I don't know what, what I'm gonna do with it um, we have a co-worker that's a mutual friend I might let him use it but just full flathead rig six horse quantum I think the engine is a 03. Yeah, 03. You see it right there, 03. This is a 12 cubic inch. So, anyways, that's that. 
there's this snapper this was given to me I do have the deck I'm just trying to uh, paint it right now because that was the only really rusty part on it um, it runs good I just needed a carburetor cleaner to um, my wife's uncle just gave it to me I said nah, I think, oh, that old thing's junk no <laughs> I cleaned it, tossed a fresh battery, and I cut my grass with it. But I also have a big Husqvarna 46 inch cut with a hydrostatic. And uh, I have no use for this. So once I get the deck painted, it's going for sale. I figure I get about 300 bucks for it. Maybe 350. We'll see. Weed eater, same story, same guy. <laughs> also got a push mower, but I'm keeping that. <laughs> This is a bandsaw. It came from a friend of mine. Um, story goes, his cousin needed. Uh, his cousin's doing some body work for him on one of his vehicles, and this bandsaw belonged to his cousin's uncle or his cousin's daddy. I can't remember. It's some relation to his cousin, and. That relative had given his cousin this bandsaw and then passed away not long after. So, I mean, the thing's not worth much. It's, it was built in 87 and it's a Chinese quality bandsaw. I mean, it's, it's cheese grade, <laughs> as I've heard some people say. It, it's, it's, it's a disposable type of tool, but because it has sentimental meaning, um, I've been asked to do a total restoration on it. So, I will do it. I'm, I'm going to go through it, blast it, paint it, get a new band, get a new saw blade for it, fix the belt guard, put a nice switch box on it, and um, give it back to him. So, I mean, I, I will restore literally anything. You know, I told him at first, but when he told me the story, I said, well, I understand that. You know, you can't replace things like that. So, anyways, other than that, that's pretty much all I've been doing. I haven't been doing much. The, uh... The Christmas lights are gone. I uh, I managed to get those hung with help from a coworker. And uh, other than that, I'm I've got a few other things kicking. Um, a few fan projects, a few whatnot. Um, oh, shit. So, <clears throat> anyways, that's what's going on. Um, I'm trying to say, oh, the uh, the carb for that '68 Chevy truck, that that Edelbrock carburetor, uh, should be getting installed within the next couple of weeks. So hopefully, I'm home, I'm not offshore, and I can actually uh, get that videoed when we install that and tune it and see how she runs. And uh, I hope, like I said, hopefully I can video it and y'all can. Y'all can be there to watch it. So, anyways, that's all I got tonight. Um, I'll post another video when I got something else interesting. Interesting, I'm working on.